Welcome to the TK Dale Wealth Podcast. I'm your host, Trevor Dale. I'm the founder of TK Dale Wealth Management and the creator of Million Dollar Mortgage. Uh, today we're talking about hedge funds and the strategy I'm gonna talk about specifically is merger arbitrage. So a lot of people don't know about this and I wanted to get to it. Um, before I do that, make sure you subscribe if you haven't already done to. You can find this on a podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or Stitcher, or you can find this on YouTube or at our website at tkdale.com. Please subscribe and share with one person. Now, uh, before I get into our topic of merger arbitrage for hedge funds, I'm going to do the disclaimer and the lawyer thing, which means that uh, if you act on any of this information, it is not meant as individual advice and meant for, as educational purposes only. If you do act on it, I recommend you seek the help of a licensed professional prior to doing so. Um, the other thing is that this may contain forward-looking information as I may have discussions about future things that may or may not happen. We do not guarantee results or anything else. And lastly, I do not, uh, I'm not soliciting funds or stocks or anything else uh, as a particular product or investment for you. Now that we've got the lawyer thing out of the way, let's get on with our topic, merger arbitrage. So a hedge fund, hedge funds are interesting. I'm going to briefly go over um, like I did last time when I was talking about um, uh, some of the other hedge fund strategies. but uh, what I want to do is hedge funds ideally is what you're trying to do is remove overall market risk and that's what hedge means. Now, not all hedge funds do that even though they may be in the hedge fund category. So be careful and just understand what their actual strategy is and that you understand it. Uh, understanding merger arbitrage, let's get into that. There are two parts, maybe even three parts to a merger arbitrage strategy. When you're doing merger arbitrage, merger, as it sounds, is one company is gonna buy another company. And what you're trying to do is arbitrage, so you're taking advantage of the price discrepancies between the two. So say one company is gonna buy another company and they're gonna pay in stock, so you're gonna get three shares, um, so you're gonna get one share of, say you're gonna get one share of the acquiring company for every three shares that you own or even to make it more simple, let's just do one-to-one. -one. That's ugly looking, but one-to-one, -one, right? Simple math, uh, a lot of times it's fractional and there's a difference in terms of how they value the company, how many shares they're gonna give. Sometimes there's a cash component. And so in this simplistic event example, what you're gonna do is the company who is being bought is usually at a higher price than where they were trading prior to any sort of news we're understanding that there would be another company coming to buy it. So the price on the buying of the target company, you would buy that target company and what's gonna happen is that would drive that price up to what the merger price is because all of a sudden it's trading along here and then the merger is announced where someone's gonna buy it and it's gonna drive the stock price up and then it's gonna slowly ride along. Now it's not gonna go all the way up on day one to the very offering price. The offering price may be up here and so it'll go up a bit, and then what's gonna happen on the news, and then what's gonna happen is, as it gets closer to the merger, assuming things still look like they're gonna happen, it'll get up to that offer price, and then the merger will go through. The opposite happens on the acquirer company, and the, the company that's doing the acquiring is their price will be going along, and now they're gonna spend money to acquire another company, which is going to reduce it, even though the idea is that when they bring that company in, it will be accretive to their earnings and their growth and their business model overall. Sometimes they're just bringing it in so they can boost it or their synergies and what they're trying to do is make their own company more efficient or they'll roll one in. There's a whole range of reasons why they may do that. But what'll happen is that this stock price will go down to a point. And then as it goes towards the offer, it will continue to go down further but only a little bit as they get to here. Now, what's happening is that if you own this company, it will go up. And if you short this company, it will go down, ideally because of the merger that's going on. Now, this is the part where a lot of companies, you wanna get in as early as possible. So at a minimum, what you're trying to do is get in at this point, right? This is where the point where the stock price starts to go on. And what you can do is you can take advantage of the price change from when the market has assimilated the information to the time when the deal actually goes through. Now, when they, in the company that they're buying, there is still this profit to be made here. 
and in the company, you can make profit on shorting a stock. Let's talk about shorting a stock. If you're not aware of what shorting a stock is, the idea in any trade, you're always buying low and selling high. But if you just reverse the order and you still sell high and you're buying low and you just say it backwards, you're still making money. So you're going to sell at a higher price and you're going to spend less. But let's just say you do it in reverse order. So when you buy the company, you're going to pay money here and ideally you'll sell it at a higher price. When you short it, you're still going to sell it at a higher price, but you're going to buy it lower. You're just going to buy it first. That's shorting a stock. You're anticipating downward price movement, right? So if this is your time as it progresses along, now you have one for one. Ideally, when you short this stock, you are actually minus one share here and you will be plus one share here. On deal time, you will get, they will merge the two. You will get one share of the new company. And what will happen is that um, this stock will now turn into this stock. So you would give up your target company shares. And this is not target the, the retailer. This is just the, the company that's being acquired in terms of a target. This, and then you will now have one positive share. So this share will actually, the target company will now become one share of the acquiring company. And what will happen is that, so plus one and minus one equals zero shares at the end of it. So all you're doing is essentially flattening this out. So you're gonna end up with nothing in the end and what your profit is, is this price appreciation in here for the buying and you're gonna benefit on the downside on the acquiring company. So you're gonna profit on the downside and the upside on both stocks and everything will flatten out and you're left with some cash left over. That's how they do it. it may still sound complicated, I get it. It takes a lot for people to understand. And the other thing that they'll do is they'll use leverage. So now that this has happened, you're essentially locked in. This is, this is pairing these two up in a trade. You're not as exposed to overall market movements anymore. So if these are both in manufacturing and you have you know $100 worth of one stock and $100 worth of another stock, but you're minus $100 on the stock that you're short and you're positive $100 on the stock that you're long, what's gonna happen is if the market moves up 10%, they both move up 10%, you're actually losing on the short, but you're gaining on it on the buy by the equal amount. And then same thing on the downside is that you're losing on the one that you own and you're gaining on the one that you're short. So you're essentially moving it through the market gyrations as they go um, and they should offset for the most part. So that what that means is sort of a, a, the advantage is that you're sort of fairly market neutral. And, and what happens is that as the market moves, you should be fairly insulated to the correlation, the, the the amount that these stocks will move to the overall market, they may move around a bit, but there's a deal going on. So the market will be focused on that. It will be affected each of those stocks, but as they move, ideally they'll be moving in sync and you're less affected by that. Now, what can go wrong? Um, this can fall apart. What if, they, what if they get through and they say, announce their intention to go through with the deal. And then all of a sudden they get through and things happen and the board just can't agree. They can't, finalize the terms. There's another offer that comes in and says, you know what? It was called a white knight. And what's going to happen is that these guys will all of a sudden find another suitor to buy them. Sometimes there's break clauses that if they do that, they're going to have to pay a heavy fine. There's poison pills that companies enact and they have it inside their companies. And what will happen is that they will dilute themselves so much and no longer becomes accretive to the company. So they will issue a massive amount of stock. And then all of a sudden it becomes less advantageous for the company that's buying them. There are a number of other things that can happen, right? So the deal falls apart. You can, you can also be using quite a bit of leverage on this. And what happens if the deal falls apart and you're using a lot of leverage? Leverage amplifies the gains and losses. So if the, you win on the deal, it'll amplify it. If you lose on the deal, it'll amplify that loss. So there's often leverage built into this uh, by the strategy that they'll deploy. And those are some of the things to keep in mind. Um, it's an interesting strategy. It's Interesting also because it is fairly economically set, uh, cyclical. So what will happen is that when a, an economy is doing well, you will get more companies buying other companies. And when, because there's a lot of cash to be thrown around, stock valuations are high. They've got the ability to float stock. Lots of people are buying stock. You can float it fairly cheaply. You can go out and you can issue bonds fairly cheaply. Um, and then what happens is that as the economy goes down, there's less and less deals to be made. People aren't as interested in it. So you can have a bit of a lull in your deal-making ability. 
And so that's important. And other companies that will be affected by that will be investment banks and other boutique firms that are getting in on these deals. So if there's a lot of mergers and arbitra- or, or, uh, mergers and, and acquisitions that are happening, you'll end up with a lot of activity going on. And that's good. That also helps the banks out because they're financing these deals on not only an investment banking side, but they're also financing it on the trading side when people are deploying this. The other thing the banks are doing or prime brokerages or whatever custodian is that I say bank because a lot of them are banks, um, but not necessarily is that they're also financing the, the ability to short stocks. So I'm going to go back to the shorting side. What happens is that you're going to sell high. So you're going to go minus a stock, but how do you sell something on the market that you don't actually have? You actually have to go and borrow this stock, right? So the, the custodian here is going to lend you a stock so that you can sell it on the market. And now you have this minus one position and this will go up and down. And all you're going to do is pay back an interest rate to them on these deals. This borrow rate on stocks can become quite expensive. It can be very, very expensive. You talk about a hundred percent return. So you will have to pay to borrow the acquiring stock in some cases. If there's a big problem with the company or something like that, you can end up with very high rates. So for example, if a stock is trading at $30 and there is massive amounts of interest in shorting the stock, there's big demand for it. You could end up paying $30 for that stock, which means in a year's time, you would have paid out $30 in borrow fees back to the custodian. Now you better make more than your $30 worth back. But if the thing is, Ideally, when a stock is going, you're, you're shorting it and you're anticipating that the stock is going down. So here it is today, but it can only go down to zero. That's the maximum that it can go down to. So if you have a 100% borrow rate in 12 months, you better get in and out of that trade at a faster rate than you're paying for your borrow. So there's some things that have to happen there in order for this to be profitable when you're shorting stocks. I went over shorting kind of quickly, but not a lot of people are aware of it. I'll talk about it more. Uh, I've got quite a lot of experience in terms of the hedge fund side. So I'm going to share that. It's not the bulk of what I do now, but it is interesting to a lot of people. So I'm going to just going to share some more of that stuff. What I'd like you to do is if you haven't already done so and you made it this far, I'm going to congratulate you first off because this could be a boring topic to many and uh, I'm passionate about it. I even put my wife to sleep at night with it. Whenever she's not feeling sleepy, I just start talking about stocks and out she goes. So one of the things I want you to do is I want you to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And the one thing to take away, I want to know what your takeaway is on this. So if you're watching this on YouTube, iTunes, the website, send us an email, social media, Instagram, Facebook at TK Dale wealth on any of those social media platforms, Twitter. Um, let me know what it is that your biggest takeaway from this is and what you're gathering from it. So I hope this helps. It's trying to be a little bit educational and let people know what is going on inside the big murky world of hedge funds and how they operate. It's an interesting strategy. Um, I've been a part of a lot of deals where we're trying to source stock for people and helping out those funds in the past. That was a previous part of my career. Um, Happy to tell you more if you want. So I hope you have a great day. Thank you for listening. Again, I'm Trevor Dale, founder of TKDale Wealth Management and creator of Million Dollar Mortgage. Have a great day.